Hello Flight uh, Simmers and welcome to my channel. In today's video I will do some touch and go training with Cessna 172N model to show you how to fly and operate the Cessna 172N for continuous uh, circuits. I'm gonna fly uh, standard circuits which means all my turns will be to the left hand. Let's get in the Cessna pilot seat and start the takeoff. Before I start my takeoff, I want to brief to give you an idea on this procedure. Let's begin. The surface wind is calm, therefore I'll keep my ailerons to neutral. I'll maintain the runway heading till 500 AGL, which will be 900 feet on the altimeter. Then I'll start my left turn to the crosswind leg. The runway is long, so the takeoff will be normal with flaps up. My takeoff speed is 55 knots. The climb speed will be 73 knots, which is the best rate of climb speed. I already did my takeoff checklist and now I can start the takeoff. I push gently the throttle to full in. I keep the aircraft on the runway center line using my rudder pedals. I glance at the engine instruments to check that the indications are pointing to the green bands speed alive 55 knots I apply generally a back pressure on my yoke at lift off I keep the dash edge reference line a little bit below the horizon to let the aircraft accelerate under the ground effect conditions as my speed get closer to 70 knots I raise my dash line reference to the horizon line to maintain my climb speed which is 73 knots I keep my turn coordinator, wings level and ball centered to maintain the runway heading. I monitor my altimeter to be prepared for the crosswind leg turn. After reaching 900 feet, I look at the left side through my window to pick a landmark, a beam of my aircraft. This will be my next heading. At the same time, for the flight safety purpose, I check for traffic and make sure it's clear before initiating the turn. The other way to determine the crosswind heading is by monitoring the runway heading position on my DG during the turn. As it moves by 90 degrees to the right on my DG, I'll stop the turn. And I can keep doing this for all the other circuits legs until final. Now I can start my uh, left turn with standard rate turn using my turn coordinator. I keep watching for my altimeter. I stop the climb at uh, 1400 feet. My runway heading is coming to 90 degrees mark on my DG. I will start slowly rolling back to wings level. At 1000 feet AGL, which is 1400 feet on my altimeter, I'll stop the climb. I set power to 2000 RPM. I trim and stabilize my aircraft. Traffic on the left checked. I start another left turn to establish myself on the downwind leg. I watch my heading for another 90 degrees movement on my DG. Now my runway heading is getting closer to 180 degrees mark on my DG. I start rolling back to wings level. Now look at through your left window to the runway to adjust your position. You should not be too far from the runway. If you divide the wing strut into three equal distances, the runway should cross the wing strut at the upper second line. A beam of the runway midpoint, I check the speed for the flaps operating range and I set the flaps to 10. I set my performance for 75 knots. Now I can do a quick engine instruments check, starting from the left, primer in and locked, master switch on, magnetos both, carb heat in, mixture full rich, oil temperature and pressure green. When the aircraft is a beam of the runway threshold, I set the carb heat to on. 
After crossing a beam the threshold, I start looking through my left window to spot the 45 degrees position to threshold. This is the point where I'm gonna start my left base turn. Now before I start my left turn to the base leg, I check for traffic first, then I start rolling the aircraft to the left. I set the flaps to 20. I monitor my heading as my runway heading moves closer toward 270 degrees mark on my DG, I stop the turn. I watch for coordinated turn on my turn coordinator and you can adjust your power to maintain the speed for 70 knots. My runway heading is coming up to 270 degrees mark. I start to roll back to wings level. Now I look through my left window as the upper portion of my wing strut get closer to the runway, I start a smooth left turn to the final. I reduce my engine RPM to start the final descent. I adjust my bank angle as necessary to join the final leg. I maintain a constant distance between my dashboard edge and my flare point. To obtain this distance, first divide the distance between the dashboard edge and the upper end of the sky view to three segments. Then the distance between the dashboard edge and the flare point is one third of this total distance. I maintain my aircraft attitude with my yoke and I control my landing speed with my throttle. I always prefer to land with flaps 20 when I'm doing my touch and go. Upon crossing the runway threshold, I start reducing the engine power slowly to idle. I apply back pressure on my control column to bring the aircraft nose up to cruise attitude. As the aircraft starts sinking, I smoothly bring the nose up toward climb attitude until touchdown. Flaps up, carb heat off, then I apply full power for another takeoff. Then I follow the same procedure as I showed you for the other circuits. Thank you for watching and enjoy flying the touch and go. See you in the next tutorial.